Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. Hello, hello, everybody. I hope you're doing so well today. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are continuing our series on kids' gut health. So last week we started this series and talked about uncovering and addressing the underlying cause of common digestive complaints in children. So if you missed that one, you can go back and have a listen. We covered constipation, we covered diarrhea, we covered gastro infections tummy aches and reflux and some of the common underlying causes that are often not looked at um, when it comes to the medical approach to these issues in children. Now, today I want to talk, I want to dive into food allergies and intolerances and talk specifically about, again, our approach and what the medical system is missing when it comes to these kinds of issues in kids. But before we get to that, I just want to sort of um, share some really interesting and quite disturbing stats when it comes to allergies. Um, And this is straight from ASCIA, which is the Allergy and Immune Diseases in Australia um, report. So allergic diseases and allergies are the fastest growing chronic disease in Australia. Um, And this this includes both food allergies like we're talking about today, but also insect drug um, allergies as well, asthma, allergic rhinitis or hay fever and eczema. So these are all sort of clumped together. But um, 19.6% of the Australian population have at least one allergic disease. Isn't that crazy? Almost 20% of the population. Um, And allergic diseases are most common in children and adolescents, and they do often persist into adulthood. Um, 10% of Australian infants have a proven food allergy, which is one of the highest incidences internationally. Hospital admissions for anaphylaxis have increased fourfold over the last 20 years. Um, So, you know, this is obviously something that needs to be addressed. And the reason that allergic diseases are on the rise, you know, is not clear, is not clear. It's controversial. Um, You know, the the hygiene hypothesis is about as um, close that we have to why this could be happening. And the hygiene hypothesis states that early exposure to microbes um, actually improves the immune system and reduces the incidence of allergy in um, children and adults. And, you know, we know that we have this sort of obsession with hygiene and sanitation. I mean, even before the pandemic, but this is having negative effects. Um, and we, we are going to be, you know, talking about this more. And I'll link to some episodes that we've talked about the hygiene hypothesis um, in the show notes if you're interested to learn more about that, which I, I think is is super fascinating. Um, but when it comes to allergies, we're talking specifically about food allergies and intolerances today. So allergies and intolerances are complex. Uh, there are different types of allergies, different types of intolerances. Um, but I think like just to, to kind of give you a bit of a found, some foundational knowledge for those of you who don't know, there are, um, you know, proper allergies are known as IgE reactions. So these are the ones that are, you know, that are life uh, threatening this is where anaphylaxis comes in. So these kind of allergies or IgE reactions have a rapid onset and a tiny amount of the allergen can trigger a reaction. You know if your child has a, a proper IgE allergy. Um, and, you know, these are the sorts of allergies that it is helpful to, you know, uh, test for. 
The tests are really effective and efficient. Um, a skin prick test will tell you if there is a reaction or not. IgG reactions or more intolerant reactions are a lot murkier. They're not as clear cut. Um, IgE reactions have a longer onset. So the reaction can occur hours or even days after ingestion. And it can also be dose dependent. So um, your child might be okay with consuming a small amount of a food, but then too much will cause problems, which makes it even harder to sort of pick up. Uh, the symptoms vary a lot more with these IgG or food intolerance reactions, and testing for food intolerances is really inconclusive. They, they These can be really difficult to figure out. Um and I'll link to an episode that we did with our nutritionist, Mel, specifically on food intolerances, um, if you're interested to know more as well. But for the most part, food allergies and intolerances, you know, have an it, that there's an issue with an inappropriate reaction from the immune system um, or the digestive system and or the digestive system, I should say. So to put really simply, the immune system gets confused and it can't recognize if a substance is okay or it's not okay. And generally with um, allergies and intolerances, the immune system is is sort of um, responding inappropriately to something that is uh, relatively safe. Um so let's talk now about like the medical approach to um, food allergies and intolerances. Most of the time, uh, the medical approach is focusing on relieving the symptoms by prescribing medications such as antihistamines, steroids, um, you know, w- whether oral steroids or steroid creams for things like eczema. The only time that a doctor will address your child's diet generally is if it's an allergy, an IgE allergy, and they will simply recommend that you avoid that food at all cost. Um, And obviously that is very well warranted. But if your child has more of an IgG reaction, doctors will often not even be able to pick this up. Um, And, you know, diet often won't be sort of like dug into as, as nowhere near as much as it should. Um, it can be really unclear what food is causing the issue. And a lot of the time with intolerant type reactions, um, you know, the medical approach is sort of um, sweeps it under the rug uh, and says that, um, you know, th- that food probably doesn't have anything to do with your child's condition. This is really common in things like eczema. I've heard this time and time again. Um, and then, you know, we will uncover what's going on for a child, remove that food, and suddenly their eczema is so much better. So the problem with the medical approach when it comes to food allergies and intolerances is that it, it's more of that Band-Aid approach. Yes, medications, of course, can be life um, saving in these conditions, but it, it's more of that first aid approach um, and that band aid approach. It's not addressing any underlying cause or underlying factors. So the more holistic approach that I'm going to be be diving into now, you know, we're looking at the root cause, the underlying cause, and it can make a difference, a real difference, to a child's overall health and well being. Um, the other approach that I want to talk about, um, and you know, we see this with a lot of, of more natural health practitioner recommendations, are that you know parents will say, "Well, my child can't eat anything." You know, my practitioner has recommended that that we remove this and that and that and that, and they've got this long list of foods that they need to stay off of. And yeah, look, short term, sometimes that is warranted, but it can be a dangerous approach because the immune system becomes more and more sensitive. There can be a real nutrient gap that leads to nutrient deficiencies because the child isn't eating a wide range of food and it puts a lot of stress on families. So we really like to focus on improving tolerance. Um, And, you know, we do this in kind of a a multifactorial sort of way. So look, I want to be clear here. I'm not saying that, that the 
things that we're, we're going to be going through in today's episode can, you know, necessarily cure anaphylaxis um, allergy reactions. But addressing the underlying issues can really help to minimize symptoms and relieve other symptoms that allergy children can be experiencing. So many children with allergies also um, experience digestive symptoms like bloating or loose bowel movements, or they become sick really easily because their immune system is sort of under under stress. Um, even behavioral issues and learning difficulties uh, can be supported by improving overall tolerance to food. To improve tolerance, we need to look at the gut. Um, we need to look at the immune system. Uh, and, you know, there, there's certain sort of layers that we want to be looking at. So there are four main areas to address when it comes to rebalancing the immune system um, in food allergies and intolerances. And these are number one, enzymes, so enzyme production within the gut. Number two is bacteria. So this is all about that gut microbiome. Number three is the barrier, the gut um, you know, the gut wall, the integrity of the gut wall. And number four is the immune function itself. So let's have a look at, at these sort of areas in a little bit more detail. So enzymes, M M enzymes. <laughs> enzymes are needed to break down food. And some intolerances occur because the body simply isn't producing enough enzymes to break down a particular food. So a really great example of this that everyone will, will know about is lactose intolerance. You know, those people that can't, they can have dairy, but they can't have lactose. So there's a lot of options now for lactose-free milks and things like that. So lactose in Intolerance isn't immune in nature. The immune system isn't reacting to that particular food or food substance. It's a lack of enzyme called um, lactase that breaks down lactose. Uh, so to address this, we need to focus on enhancing the body's production of enzymes to help break down food properly. And when we look at, you know, the, the health of the overall digestive system, there are certainly things that we can do to optimize enzyme production so that the body is naturally producing more enzymes. Look, some people genetically are just never going to uh, produce enough lactase, for example, for them to be able to tolerate large amounts of dairy or or you know, even moderate amounts of dairy uh, for some people. Uh, and so enzyme, um, enzyme deficiency or reduction in enzyme, um, the ability for the body to produce enzymes can definitely um, you know, be at play when it comes to many food intolerances. So that's one sort of level or layer that we look at. The next one, as I said, is bacteria. So this is about balancing out the gut microbiome or the bacteria that lives within our gut. When it comes to addressing food allergies and intolerances and sensitivities, diversity is key when it comes to the gut microbiome. And in the hunter-gatherer days, many, 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 many years ago, we had much more diversity. The average diversity of a human's gut is now half of what it was back in the hunter-gatherer days. And that there's a whole lot of things at play um, that has led to that. But, you know, our diet and lifestyle are huge contributors to this lack of diversity. So how do we increase diversity in a child's gut? We want to focus on fueling the good bacteria. So we probably have, you know, as parents, we know that we can um, focus on on getting more bacteria into our kids' gut with things like probiotics, um, supplements, and fermented foods. But there's no point putting this good bacteria into a, a gut environment that can't fuel it or feed it. So prebiotics are a type of fiber that many kids do not eat enough of that feed the good guys in the gut. So they nourish the good bacteria, they encourage it to grow, and you can find prebiotics in whole foods, you know, nuts, and seeds and vegetables and whole grains. So we just want to focus on eating more 
whole foods and giving our kids more of those whole food um, varieties when it comes to fueling that good bacteria within the gut. We also want to expose our kids to different microbes. So we want to be careful not to be, um, you know, ultra hygienic and and sanitized. There's There's a fine balance there, but we live in a sanitized world, which means kids aren't exposed to different microbes as much as they once were. So encouraging them to play outside, Um, you know, in the dirt, in the garden, play sports outside, go hiking, go camping, let them play with pets. All of these can really help to contribute to a more diverse microbiome. And we know our kids are just not spending enough time outside. So that's one simple thing that we can do. And then we can use things like probiotics and fermented foods as well. You do need to um, remember here, though, that not all probiotics are created equally. The cheapest probiotics from the supermarket or the pharmacy are probably not going to be, you know, the best option for your child. Specific strains of probiotics actually help with different conditions, including things like peanut allergies, asthma, and eczema. But we do recommend getting some support by a practitioner um, to find the right probiotic for you. And we can certainly help with that. We are going to be um, talking more about this um, in you know the uh, gut health content that we have coming out as well. So make sure you're following us over on Instagram. Um, and even hop on our email list by um, downloading our gut health ebook if you haven't already. The link will be in the show notes. We'll be sharing more um, in this area soon. So there's enzymes, there is bacteria, and then there is the barrier. So in the gut, we have tight junctions between the cells of the gut wall. So think of the gut like a tube. We want food to stay in the tube. Um, until it's been fully broken down. But when the tight junctions break down, the food can leak into the bloodstream before it's been fully digested. This is known as leaky gut or intestinal permeability. And when there is undigested food leaking through into the bloodstream, the immune system sees it as an enemy and responds with a you know a fight and inflammation so this uh, this can actually be a cause of food allergies and intolerances because the proteins are leaking into the bloodstream the immune system is um you know is fighting fighting off these proteins which are somewhat harmless but not broken down enough Um, and that can sort of lead to food allergies and intolerances. It is a bit of a chicken and egg scenario. So just as leaky gut can create food allergies and intolerances, the inflammation caused from food allergies and intolerances can lead to leaky gut. So we really need to be caring for that gut integrity um, and healing, you know, focus on healing the gut in children with food allergies and intolerances is super important. And that's not that that's a really a big piece of the missing puzzle when it comes to the way that these um, conditions are treated uh, medically. And then lastly, we have immune regulation. So we want to encourage a well-regulated immune system in our kids. Our kids' immune system is immature. It's not sure what to do. It's still learning. And this is why kids are more prone to allergies than adults are. So we want to support that healthy and balanced development of our kids' immune system system. How do we do this? Number one is working on our kids' gut health. And, you know, we've talked about um, some of the some of the things that we can do already um, and, and the things we want to be sort of focusing on, that barrier, that enzyme production, the microbiome or bacteria. The art uh, because because the gut is super important in a, reg- a well regulated and developed immune system. So gut health, uh, an unhealthy gut is going to lead to an imbalanced immune system or a subpar immune system. You know, it might be allergies and intolerances that it leads to, or it might be more sort of frequent infections. So the gut is really important when it comes to immune function. And the other thing that's really important when it comes to immune regulation is vitamin D. So vitamin D is an essential nutrient when it comes to both immune regulation and also gut microbiome diversity. 
Um, another thing that vitamin D is really important for is maintaining that gut barrier, um, which is you know an important part of this this whole sort of process of addressing allergies and intolerance in children as well. So making sure your kids have adequate vitamin D um, is really important. Again, another vote for spending more time outside um, because vitamin D, of course, is the sunshine nutrient. So lots of kids are vitamin D deficient. You can get a a blood test to check their vitamin D levels. Um, A lot of kids will need some sort of supplementation, whether that's in something like a cod liver oil, which contains some naturally occurring vitamin D or a specific vitamin D supplement. Um, And other kids will be able to address um, and maintain good vitamin D levels by, you know, just focusing on spending some more time out in the sun, sunshine and outdoor environment, which of course is great for that diversity of the microbiome as well. So as you have heard, you know, simply avoiding a food that your child might be allergic to and treating them symptomatically with antihistamines or steroid creams um, is only a very small part of the picture. Yeah, these things can be really important, but what about all of those layers, the enzymes, the bacteria, the barrier, the immune function? There's so much that we can do to support kids with allergies and intolerances that falls outside of what um, you know, general medical practitioners will even talk to you about. So I just really wanted to share that information for that insight. As I said last week, um, we uh, I am gearing up to run my free Kids Gut Health Masterclass at the end of October, which is going to uh, dive into this topic uh, so much more. Um, so look out for information about that coming out soon. And next week, we're going to be doing a deep dive into the microbiome and why it's so important for your kids' health. We talked a bit about bacteria and the importance of microbiome this week. Definitely tune in next week for some more information on that. Thank you so much for listening. If you know of someone who has a child with an allergy or an intolerance, I would so appreciate you sending them this episode. I'm all about, you know, having a big impact and and um, creating this free information on the podcast to reach as many people as possible to um, to help them realize that there are other things that they can be doing when it comes to their kids' health and nutrition. So any sharing of this episode is so, um, I'll be so grateful for. And I would also love to hear from you over on Instagram. You can find us at Natural Super Kids. Send me a message. Let me know how you found this episode, what you learned. Um, and if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. See you next week. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Head on over to our website, naturalsuperkids.com for the show notes for this episode, as well as a whole heap of inspiration to help you raise healthy and happy kids. I'll see you next week.